In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Today we are celebrating the fifth Thursday of Ordinary Time. Let us take a moment to prepare ourselves for the celebration by asking for God's mercy in our lives. Lord Jesus, he healed a contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, he came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care. They're relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace. They may be defended always by your protection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals, but none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked, yet they felt no shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork, Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around the table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went into the district of Tyre. He entered a house and wanted no one to know about it, but he could not escape notice. Soon a woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him. She came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to drive the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied and said to him, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's scraps. Then he said to her, For saying this, you may go. The demon has gone out of your daughter. The woman went home. She found the child laying in bed and the demon gone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many people point to the story of creation to endorse man's superiority over the rest of creation saying that it's our God-given right to dominate everything else. In this particular version of creation, God gives the man the opportunity to name the other animals, which is a symbolism 
uh, symbolic for taking control or having control over others. Ironically, though, no one seems to be paying attention to the fact that the woman, the true, genuine partner of the man, is not subjected to man. It's a lateral move taken from the rib, not from the man's head, not from the man's foot, but it's a lateral transition, meaning that there are unequal terms. So what makes humanity, man, um, the most advanced or perhaps the apex controller of creation is their intellect. The females of the species have the exact same capacity. So ironically, we kind of missed that. And for, uh, for a long time, humanity has enforced this patriarchal male-dominated approach to things using the physical strength as the dominant factor really kind of ill-conceived. And so I think we, as a church and as a race, need to revisit this because there's great wisdom when God says that man is not good to be alone. It doesn't matter if it's man or woman, they're not good to be alone. Humanity needs is a, a social creature, a social species. And it is better when it's integrated into a relationship. So no man or woman is an island. They don't contain everything to its fullest degree. And so it's best when we integrate and we use the diverse elements, the complementary nature of others to create a better whole a better entity that's in relationship. It's not a matter of power, it's not about control, it's about just being better human beings because the others will draw out the best from within ourselves and we do the same for them. It's a kind of a win-win situation. In today's gospel, we see an example of this. Jesus is playing hardball with this Greek woman because he's initiating a dance this woman is Greek, meaning she's a Gentile. So according to the traditions of that prejudiced time, the Gentiles were not as good as the Jews were. And certainly women weren't as good as the men were. So she has a double strike against her, and yet she's the one that is able to engage Jesus at a debate, a contest, so to speak, of wit. And she takes Jesus' words and uses them against him, so to speak. I think it's a case that Jesus had every intention of losing the debate because he needed to make a point of the brokenness of the traditions. And she emphasizes all the good things that were important for this partner for man. She's humble enough to take a little bit of abuse and not worry about it. She's focused enough to be able to stay compassionate and do what needs to be done to get care for her daughter. And she's smart enough to be able to deal with Jesus on his own terms. What Jesus does is allow her to emphasize a good complementary part that he plays in character of the male-dominated society of the time. The two come together for a better whole. And the same is true for us if we revisit our traditions, revisit our viewpoints, recognize their shortfalls, and go back for a deeper appreciation of what God was actually trying to accomplish by creating a partner equal to and yet different from ourselves. Only when we learn how to work with that in our most intimate of our relationships will we kind of extend that out to living in villages and nations and as a race. We've got some work to do, but we have a good starting point. The scriptures are full of great wisdom. Confident in God's great love for us, we place our needs before him. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, 
May God's light shine upon them in their work of spreading the gospel, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders, may God guide them in faith to lead with responsibility and integrity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with seemingly insurmountable challenges, may God's love strengthen their faith, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today, may God's bountiful presence permeate our lives, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Howard Klebes, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all the faithful departed, may they rest in the loving embrace of God the Father, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal Father, you created us and provided for our every need. Hear our prayers today as we humbly ask for your help. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory, that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O God, who willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.